So 12.1 is getting into the three-dimensional coordinate system. Um, <clears throat> three dimensions instead of two dimensions. And um, so, as you know, with the two dimension, two dimensional credit uh, coordinate system, you have the x and the y and the axis and the y axis. And these, this is the positive direction and this is the negative direction. And for the y, this is positive, this is negative. And so basically, um, to add the third dimension, what you typically do is you rotate this, rotate, rotate this part down, and, and then forward, and then rotate it that way. So you end up with something like, um, so you end up with something like that. So if you, if you can, well, not like that. Well, I got. So think of this as be, as lying in like a horizontal plane, and because this x part get in the y part has to be so you're going from x to right, x to y is like in this direction. That means the x is going to be coming out like that, and the y is going to be going there like that. Okay, and that's this is the positive x direction. This is the positive y direction, and then um, the positive z direction is going straight up. Okay, so think of, uh, so that's pretty much how the three-dimensional axis works. Now, the d distance formula, distance between two points is, um, you just add another plus uh, Z1 minus, Z2 minus Z1 squared. And then this right here is equation for, for a sphere. So you notice with the circle, you had just uh, you had just this part right here for a circle, and without that part, for, yeah, this part for and make it a and it's going to be a sphere, which would be the surface of the sphere would would be this one. Okay, so that's the three dimensional, um, the three dimensional <clears throat> coordinate system. Now, uh, it's kind of an introduction to that. Now let's get to the exercises. And so if you're following along in WebAssign, you should probably have another WebAssign window open. And it says to consider this point, and we want to find the projection of the point onto the, onto the X, Y plane. Okay, so if we put the coordinate system up again, Okay, this time y is going over there, z is going and z is going up, and then x and then x is coming out, coming straight out at us. And we go one point one value there, three values on the y axis, and then four values up. Oops. Then And then you go up by four values. And you get a point like right there, okay? So the point's like right there, okay? So that's um, one, three, four. So that's kind of what, what it looks like. Okay, so if you project it into the XY plane, the XY plane would be the plane that's that's where these are the axes, the x and the y. And so that's gonna be right there. Okay, so that point, what's the coordinates of that point gonna be? Right here. One, three, zero. Yeah, exactly. So that's gonna be, that's gonna be what that is, one, three, zero. And then, the second one is projecting it into the y z plane. That, so that would be this plane right here with the, the y and the z axes. And so that would be this point here. And what's that gonna be? That means that the x is, is knocked out, right? Zero, three, four. Yeah, and then the x z plane, that would be, um, 
that would be this line here. You so that means zero. that the negative one comma zero comma four. And that's what I said. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Um, I'm going to put those in the web assignment and see if that works. Whoa, that works. Those points do work. Yay. Okay. And so then um, the next one would be to draw the rectangular box. Dang, which one of those boxes is it? They all look the same, except the points are labeled differently. Oh, yeah. I'm guessing in the top right. I'm not. I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, it's the top right one. Oh, there's four. Oh, I didn't see the others. Yeah, there's four. Of them. Okay, it's the top. It's the top right, and then. Isn't it just a and then the length? The triangle. You should find the hypotenuse of that. The diagonal. Okay, the diagonal would go from one from from this one three zero to. So that would be the distance between the origin. So if this is the origin, not zero zero zero, right? Right. And the point one three four. That's going to be what the diagonal would be. Okay. Now each 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 face is going to have its own diagonal, but um, you want the diagonal of the of the rectangular object, right? So that's going to be the distance from the origin to there, and then so that's going to be the square root of um, one squared plus three squared plus four squared, which is oh, the square root yeah. of nine twenty six. Yeah, yeah. Square to 26. Oh. oh, we did this in physics, kind of. Really? Uh, just in the XYZ plane, like, figuring out. Just a little bit, not like. Uh-huh. Yeah, this is kind of, this. all this is just kind of messing around a little bit. All the, the questions are kind of all over the place. Okay, let's go to the next, to number two. Okay, so number two, it says, what does the equation y equal two represent in R3? Yeah, so what plane? is this equation? Yeah, that's gonna be, that's gonna be a plane. So- It's in three dimension, right? Yeah. Oops, plane. And z equals five also represents the plane. <clears throat> okay, oh, so z equals five. Yeah, three dimensional. Ah, uh, guess it. Um, so this is so z equal. Just to give you an idea, what z equals five is. So if this is a z axis coming up right here, and this is five, it's just going to be like this plane right here. That's that's five. Okay, because x and y can be anything. So it's just going to be. And it goes on forever in all directions. Okay. Um. And then what about c? What do you think that was going to be? A line. Yeah, that's going to be a line. So that would be if you come out here to um, z to y equals two, and then come up. Um. It's going to be this line here. It's wherever they intersect. Yeah, it's where the two planes. Yeah, it's where two planes intersect. So that's going to be a line. Yes. Okay, number three. Um, and then we're supposed to identify what this would be right here. What do you think it's going to be first? Well, if we just had the. Um, 
if we just have the x y plane then um then you would might do something like this solve for y right and so that the um wait this is y so the y-intercept would be at two and it would have slope negative one like that so it'd be just a line but then there's the z right so because of the z you can also think of the z as coming straight out this way coming out at you that's another way to think of the z and so this would be just a, a plane that's going out and then if we draw it um uh it's going to be the top right wait Me the top right picture. So which which one of the um X Y what Oh it's this one I think. Which one? Oh so oops you guys you can't see that. I <laughs> guess what I'm saying guess wait. The second one, I think it's the second answer in the second picture. Because basically, so another way of writing this would be you write x and then um, negative x plus 2 for the y because y is equal to negative x plus 2 or 2 minus x is what they have written and then z so x and y can x and z can be anything and um, so it's going to be a vertical okay because remember this is going to you're going to have um, the y axis here and the x axis here and then 2 and 2 it goes through those two points and then it just kind of goes up like that. And going in all directions and so on. Okay. So that's number three. Um, well, let's go to number four. Oh, look at that. We have three points there. And three points form a triangle right okay so and what we're supposed to do is find the length of the sides of the triangle oh dang okay so we got to find pq first the length of side pq and okay so that's going to be the square root of a bunch of differences squared so here's p and here's q so we're going to take these points minus those points Wait, that's five minus three. And then the next one is three minus one. And the next one is two minus one. Oh, they're all positive. Wow, we're so lucky. Okay, so that is the square root of, that's gonna be two squared, which is four. Four and what, what, nine? That's gonna be the square root of nine, which is three. It's gonna be three. Okay, and then, QR go so this one and this so this minus this okay so the first ones are the same so that's going to be zero this one is negative three minus three that's going to be negative nine squared and the next one's going to be five minus two that's going to be three squared so 81 plus nine the square root of 90 which will be three root 10 and then um the next one is rp so that minus that um five minus three is two negative three minus one that's negative four and then five minus one that's four okay so we have four and 16 and 16 which is whoa it's 36 isn't it Okay, let's see if those answers work. Well, 
Oh, the middle one doesn't work. How did I mess up on the middle one? If you do root 90. I what? Nothing. <laughs> okay, I'll hold on. So QR. Is it three minus negative three? So it'd be six. Oh yeah, what am I doing? Why am I writing nine? Okay, so six. So that's going to be 36. Um, that'd be 45. And so that's going to be three root five. Okay, let's see if that works. Okay, great. So that works. Fixed it. Thank you for helping me fix that. Okay. Wait, so that's just the difference yeah. of squares between all of those is what it is? Uh-huh. So you what do you mean? No, the difference and then squared. Oh, because the they tell you which one to start with. They so they tell you to start with P and Q. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, you could go QP, and it would just be all these. All these would be negatives of each other, but you would get the same answer in the end, right? Right. Okay. So now the next part is: um, is it a right triangle? Okay. So how do you think we should see if it's a right triangle or not? Okay, so how do you how do we test and see if it's the right triangle? Does anybody remember? Uh, law of sine. I don't know. Is it just it the Pythagorean theorem? Yes, it's the Pythagorean theorem. <laughs> I'm just gonna see if the Pythagorean theorem works. So, which is the largest of these three values? Six. Six is the no. larger, right? Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. I think root. Hold on. This one right here is largest, right? Because root five is more than two, right? So that's three times something that's more than 6. two. 6.7, so, that's so be, yeah. Yeah, okay, so. <clears throat> so what you do is you, you, you're going to do the... Um, Pythagorean theorem. So this is the largest one. So we're going to put this one right here. And it's going to be up against um, this 3 squared and the 6 squared. Okay, so this will be, what is this? 5 times 9, that's 45. And then oh, this right. is 9 plus 36. And that's also 45. So that means the answer is yes. It's the right triangle. Woo! Okay. And then the second part is it an isosceles triangle? Uh, it'd have to be isosceles if two sides equal each other, right? Yep. You have to have two sides that are equal. So, so are there not. two sides that are equal? Yes, that's no. Nice. All these, all these three are different. Okay. All those are different. Okay. Now, another thing that it might ask, or some questions that you might be given, is if um, that's if they're collinear, which means is um, do those three points lie on the same line, and how would you determine that? If they're collinear or not. Any ideas? Nope. That would be this one. If the larger one is equal to the sum of the other two. Oh, so okay. it is? Of, no, of course they're not. Oh, what? No, if this is, this is without the squares. Oh. This is without the squares. So like if you have um it's like if you have three points like this that are on the same line, 
then these two distances here are going to add up to the long the long distance, right? So this long distance all the way is going to be the sum of these two, right? Whereas if they're not on the same line, so they're on a like a triangle, then any two will be greater. Any two sides are going to be greater than the third side. The, the sum of any two sides is going to be greater than the third side. Okay. So of course they're not. They can't. They can't be. It's a right triangle anyway. So. Okay. Um, okay. So moving along to number five. Okay, so the first one is find the distance from one negative five five to the x y plane. Okay, anyone take want to take a shot at that? So there's z. Here's y, and here's x and the point is one here and dang negative five on the y on the y right okay so that's already putting us like over here and then five on the z axis so let's let's just say that's five so the point's like going to be right there. Okay, so now the distance between that and the xy plane. So xy plane is this plane right here. What's the distance going to be? Okay, has anybody figured it out yet? This point right here? What's the distance between this point and this plane down here? Is this five? Yep, that's just going to be five. Okay, it's just going to be this vertical distance right here, which is five. Okay, what about the to the YZ plane? What's that going to be? That's going to be one. So it's basically, just the one that's missing is the X, and that's one. So it's, you're right here. And it's looking at this it's this y z plane, which is right there, and this distance here is one, so this distance here between that and this and the plane up here is going to be one and then the x z plane this is a tricky this is a tricky one the x z plane what's that that's this plane here on by these two axes is it five? Yes, that's going to be five. Okay, so so that's just tricky because that's a negative five right there, but you just take the absolute value. So nice to hear. Okay, so the first five one five. Okay, now it gets more difficult because now you want to know what's the distance between from the point to the x-axis. So here's the x-axis right here, right here. Here's the x-axis, and you want to know the distance between this point and the x-axis. Okay, so it's actually going to be this. Um, Thing right here so that will be uh, the square root of squared plus five squared. yeah five squared plus five squared the other two so ignoring the one and just going with the those other two so that's going to be um, five root two looks like okay and then between that and the y-axis what's that going to be Okay, so that's going to be going from here all the way down to here. So that's going to be the square root of one squared plus five squared, or square root of 26. And this is also going to be, um, that's also going to be the square root of 26. Okay. Square root of 26. Dang, I should have like, I should have made more, I should have made the exercises for a section 12.2. We could have finished that too, I think. Oh well. 
What time does class end? At 10.50. Dang. <laughs> okay, so number six. Find the equation of the sphere with the center one negative six four and radius five. Okay, that's just like a that's so that's just gonna be like the circle. So we have um, x minus one squared plus y plus six squared plus z minus four squared equals five squared, which is gonna be twenty five. Okay? So that's just like just like doing a circle there. Um, minus one. Dang, I didn't think we'd make it through all this. Oops. Okay. So that's the equation of this of the of the sphere. Okay. Now the second part. Um, it says use an use an equation to describe this intersection with each of the coordinate planes. Um, if the sphere does not intersect with the plane, enter, enter D and E. Okay, so first of all, we have the X, Y plane. Okay, there's, there is an equation for the X, Y plane. Does anybody know what it is? The equation for the X, Y plane. B? Is it y equals mx plus b for the xy plane? No, that's the equation of a line. Pl uh, the plane in three dimensions. Um, I'll give you a hint. Okay, it doesn't have any x's or y's in it. So. If, it, if okay, so if this is the okay, if this is the um, coordinate axis right here, the xy plane is is down here, right? The xy plane is down here. Right. What is the value of z? If if zero. you're if you're anywhere, it's zero, right? Okay. So that's going to be the equation. Z equals zero. Oh, okay. Okay, and then what's this equation going to be? Oh, so, so, we'll come back to here. So, if you're going to intersect with this, you're looking at this equation and this equation. So, what do you have urge to do? Plug in Maybe zero. Just, yeah, just plug a zero in there, right? Okay, so that's going to be x minus 1 squared plus y plus 6 squared plus, um, and that's going to be 4 squared, so that's 16. And then, equals, is that 9? Okay, so that looks like what that's going to be right there. Oh, that's the actual thing. So you just solve for whatever one they, that you're looking for. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that works on my that works on my web assign. Okay. So now the next one would be what? We're talking the x z plane. What's the equation for that? Does that be y is equal to zero? Yes, sir. It's y equals zero. Yes. So you just put a y equals zero under here. And that's a 36, right? Okay. So this comes from setting y equal to zero in here. Okay. And if you subtract 36 from both sides, you're going to get, oh, I forgot to square that. You're going to get um, uh, negative 11 over here. Should I put this question in? 
Yeah. How about we don't put that equation in? Why? Why would we not put that equation in? Can you think of any values of x and y that would satisfy that equation? I mean, x's and z's that would satisfy the equation? That are real numbers? It's not going to happen, right? Because this is going to be, this is going to be at least zero, no matter what x, I, x you put in. This is going to be at least zero, no matter what x you put in. You can't add negative. those two together and get negative. So this is the D and E that they warned you about. Yay. Okay, and then this last one, um, you're gonna set x equal to zero. So we have negative one, uh, let's see, that's gonna be one, so you subtract that to get 24 on the other side. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put that in there. Um, y plus 6 squared plus um, z minus 4 squared equals 24. Okay, let's see if those are right. Yay, that's the correct. All right. Okay, let's look at number seven. Okay, so here we have, um, apparently that's the equation of a sphere. Um, and we're supposed to find it in standard form. So a standard form would be like this one here. So we're supposed to put the sphere in that form. Does that look like a lot of fun? A little bit. Of course. Okay. Yeah, that's the correct answer. A little bit. Not a lot of fun. Just a little bit of fun. Okay, so... Um, you guys know how to proceed, I think. So you're going to um, write... Put the x's together and then save a little space here. Or something and then put the y's together and save a little space there for something and then put the z's together and save some space for something there and then you're going to take this 17 to the other side so it becomes a negative 17. okay so now the question is what do we add here you guys remember it's um, 8 divided by 2 squared. Perfect yeah. square. So that's 16 then, right? 8 divided by 2 is 4. 4 squared is 16. Okay, and then this side is going to be How like... Do you find give me a 16 too. What's that? How do you find that? You take... Okay, so there's two ways. One of them is you divide this by 2, and like it's 4, right? And then you square it. The other way is, the other way is you're looking for something where, the other way is you're looking for something where um, this is going to be something squared, and the answer is x plus 4, right? Right, oh, okay. So that works. The, the 4 is going to give you an 8, a 4 here is going to give you an 8x, because it's going to be double the, the product of the middle ones, right? It's going to be okay. four, 4 times x plus four times x, which is eight x, right? And then, so then that means that's gotta be 16, because that's, okay? Okay, now, um, what goes here? So you're gonna have to have a y minus three, right? To get this, which means this is gonna be a nine. And then this side's like, where's my nine? Okay, okay, we'll give you a nine. Yeah, yeah, I'm happy now. Okay, so now, and then this next part is gonna be Z plus one, right? Yeah. So that's gonna be plus one. And then they're like, where's my, where's my one? Okay, there you go. And then, um, 
Look at that. The 17 cancels that with that and that, and we step with the nines. Whoa, there's the equation right there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put that in WebAssign, see if it accepts it. Okay, accepted or on mine. Okay, so what's the, um, okay, we, know, we need to figure out what the center and the radius are. Okay, so what's the center? Zero, zero, zero. Okay, just, ah, that's funny. <laughs> you pick it off from here, right? It's what makes it's what makes these it's what makes these zero 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 right. Oh. So what makes that zero? Negative four. Three. Negative one. Yeah. There we go. Okay. So that should be it right there. And then what's the radius? Is it the difference? No, the radius comes from over here. Oh, okay. That's easy. It's going to be three. So it's the square root of whatever is over here. Okay. And then and then if this is negative, then of course it doesn't it doesn't exist. So it's nothing. And if this is zero, then it's just a single point. It's just going to be that single point there. Okay. So oh, yes, this is kind of like circles. You guys remember circles where you had, we just had two of these, right? And the center was like where it made those zero and then the radius was the square root of that part. Okay. So let's go to the next um, exercises, number eight. Quick question. We have two left to go. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so for all these equations that we're doing, these spheres are like perfect, right? They're not like warped or anything? Right, they're perfectly round, yeah. Okay. Okay, that was my question. Yeah, now, now if you'd like to warp it, then I can tell you how to do that. You can make ellipsoids. Ooh. Maybe ellipsoid another side would be, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, ellipsoid would be, um, so if you divide everything by nine, then you're going to get nines over here and a one over here. But in ellipsoid, so these are all nines, nine, nine, nine. If you change these to different numbers, though, and you have a one over here and you have like, um, I'll just write it down. So if you had like x minus h squared over a squared plus x minus k over b squared plus z minus l. Square squared equals one. That would be an ellipsoid. Oh. Okay. okay, and so what we have is, but what we basically have is if you take this nine over here, it would be all, it'd be three, it'd be nine, nine, nine. So it's just three squared, three squared, three squared, three squared. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, and then you could like for this with this kind of an equation right here, if you built a if you made a building with um out of this, like the roof of a building, like the tabernacle is an ellipse the roof is an, is like a half of an ellipsoid, then the fo at the foci you've got really good acoustics. Well from one foci to the other. Not necessarily the rest of the building. Okay. So, number eight. Um, so we have the inequality is zero, less than or equal to z, less than or equal to two. And there's, it's a word problem here. So the inequality represents all points. Okay, and then, okay, so all points that are on or between Okay, so what this is going to be is you have the z going up, right? And then you have then you have this x y plane. So just think of this coming out of the x y plane. 
You're going from zero up to up to two. And everything inside there. So it's just gonna be kind of a um dang, a whole bunch of planes stacked on each other, I guess is what you could think of it as. Honor between the horizontal plane is equals two and the um, XY plane, which is XY plane. So it goes from, so the answers are honor between and then horizontal and XY plane. So Z, this is um, this is Z equals zero. So Z equals zero is the XY plane. Z, Z equals two is the upper plane. So you have so here this is um, between Z equals zero and Z equals two on or between. That's that's how that works. Okay, um, number nine. Here it says, describe in words the region of R3 represented by this equation, x squared plus y squared equals four. Okay, does someone want to read it from the web assign? Okay, so here, x squared equals plus y squared equals four, with no restrictions on, okay, which one, which variable has no restrictions? Uh, is yeah, because it's not an equation, right? So, there's no z's in the equation, so there's no restriction on z. But when, when stuff doesn't appear in the equation, then it can just do what it wants. <clears throat> it's like, here's a rule. Here's a rule for an x squared plus y squared must be equal to four. And then, and then Z's like, yay, it doesn't apply to me. But X and Y is like, oh man, we have to be restricted that way. Okay, so a point in the region must lie on a circle of radius. Okay, so this is a, so this is a circle. If this is just in the XY plane, if this is just in, in the plane, XY plane, then this would be a circle with what radius? Two. Yes, that would be radius two. So it's square root of force two. So that, so that answer is two. And it's centered on the z axis. Centered on the z axis. But it could be in any horizontal plane um, z equals k. Parallel to the xy plane. That's the region consists of all possible circles. Um, x plus y squared and then z equals k. Lots of words with radius two. The axis is that wait, it's just repeating everything. It sounds like, it sounds like it's just saying the same thing twice. Yeah, really. Okay, so let me just yeah, let me just give you an idea what this looks wait, like. What about, okay, so what about the after the second z equals k and therefore blank therefore a blank with radius. So is it just- Oh, dang. Or oh, circular cylinder, I'm sorry. Okay. Dang, I thought I got them all. Circular cylinder. Wait. That's like the most important part. Oh well. I missed it. Thanks for catching up for me. Okay, so essentially, if you're just looking at the, wait, that's a Z, what am I doing? Okay, so essentially, if you're just looking in here, 
then this is a circle of radius too, right? Oh, dang. That was really bad. Okay, so that's a circle of radius too. But that's when z equals zero. But when z is up here, then it's also gonna be um, a circle of radius two, okay? And then if z is up here, it's also gonna be a circle of radius two, okay? So, so it's gonna end up being like this um, cylinder, and then you can go down into negative lens too. Okay, so it's just gonna be this cylinder, a uh, circular cylinder. Okay. Oh, dang. We've got 25 minutes left. I was not prepared for that. Oops. Um, so let's do this. Let's just look a little bit about what's coming up in the next section. Um, so next, next section is vectors. Okay, so 12.2 is gonna be vectors. I didn't realize that, what I didn't realize is that we wouldn't spend any time on the syllabus because it's just the same as last semester. Okay, so vectors are basically a kind of a directional thing. You guys do vectors in uh, physics? Yeah. Yeah, so they're just they're directional. They're not they're not necessarily um, they're not necessarily like uh, they don't actually exist in any part. They're just a directional thing. So it's just a, a, a so for example, if we have we can write a vector this way, u1, u2, like that. That would be a vector in um, two-dimensional space, okay? You don't have to be, and then, another, and then a vector in three-dimensional space would be like this. Okay, so like, for example, if we had the vector, we'll call it a, it looks like they're using a as their vectors to denote it vectors. So if we had the vector, uh, one, two. Okay, so um, if here's X and there's Y, then it would be one in the X direction and two in the Y direction. Um, it would be represented that way. That was one, that's one way to represent it. So this is represented with the tail at the origin. Okay, but you could also just represent it, you know, you could have the tail anywhere. Okay, and it's still be A. Well, that's probably not. It would have to be the same size as this, though. That's also A. Okay, over here. It doesn't really matter where it is, but it's just this direct. It's just pointing in that direction, and it's this long. Okay, so it's like a force. And then the same thing would happen in um, three dimensions. Okay, and then there's a whole bunch of properties of vectors. And um, tomorrow we'll, I guess, tom we'll just handle this tomorrow, okay? And, and, and end class early today.